<laughs> Mr. Beta. Very nice. How you doing, man? Hey. So this is your little mobile home for the last week or so? Yeah, yeah. This is my Model Y Performance, and uh, it's definitely kitted out for off-roading. That was my vision when I bought it. Uh, the Cybertruck kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed, and I was like, well, I'm going to build something that will do as much as it can um, with uh, what we've got here. So it's a... Uh, it started out life as a brand new Model Y Performance 2022 from the showroom, and I just started tearing it up. So the first thing I did, um, I threw some off-road rims on it. These are from T Sportline. It's their TSS rims with uh, BF Goodrich All-Terrain TA tires on it, the trail terrains. And uh, I love that because it gives you extra sidewall. The factory Tesla rims are infamous for getting curbed and I am infamous for curbing things and so I was like well let's get some extra meat on the sides of these to protect that uh, that way I don't damage these expensive rims um, so I got rid of the Uber turbines threw these guys on there and I've loved it they also give me extra cushion and tons of traction and these will fit on the uh, Tesla Model Y performance or non-performance um, without even lift a lift kit or anything you can just throw them right on so that was like the first thing I did and uh, kind of got me started. Nice. Uh, right after that, I took it to Unplugged Performance and they put their dirt and snow coilovers, um, front upper control arms, rear spring arms, beefy front and rear sway bars, which I didn't really need, but uh, basically got their whole kit. Spent a bunch of time down there getting all that stuff on there. And uh, I, I might have gotten maybe an inch of lift from that, so I was a little bit well, I wanted more for sure. I was a little bit disappointed in what I got out of that. Um, so I went to Mountain Pass Performance. They've got a spacer kit. It'll give you an extra 1.75 inches. So I pulled everything down, put those spacers in there on the front and back, did that all myself. And uh, I don't know, it's got a decent amount of lift now. But uh, yeah, that, that really got me, got me started on this journey. So it's been a fun process. I guess in terms of my next big project, it was really tearing into the metal. So. I had done some stick welding in high school, but never really welded. Um, and so I chose the, what I was calling rock sliders, um, but basically came up with a rough design for rock sliders. And after two or three revisions, got these, because they're so angular, I call them cyber sliders. Um, and so these bolt directly to the, the battery um, mounts on either side. So I had to jack up the battery, um, kind of work this way into the jack take the bolts out and then bolt this on um, after I built it. But uh, these have been solid. The only issue was that when I built them, they hang down about an inch and three quarters. So basically took away a bunch of my ground clearance uh, that I would have had on my breakover angle. Yeah, but it's been fun. I mean, you can see this car is dirty. That's not by accident. Wait, that's not the original paint? <laughs> We're here in uh, beautiful Moab, Utah, just next to the supercharger here. And so this thing is, is seeing some hard use this week. Um, and the rock sliders have taken their fair share of hits. So they're definitely strong, uh, but they're definitely not optimized. So that's <laughs> gonna be my next project is to, uh, to basically take those up, add some armor, make them a little more integrated and cleaner design. So first fabrication project, first welding project for the car. And uh, I think they turned out pretty decent, so. And they're still on there. That was a lot of fun. And they're still there. <laughs> and my car's still there. So they did their job. The next thing I did, because I started taking the car out at that point, was mm -hmm. um, I got some pinstripes. So when you're on trails, there's always stuff hanging over. Mm -hmm. And when you do that in Arizona, uh, anywhere in the desert, really, the plants all want to hurt you. They've all got spikes. They've all got just sharp sticks. They're, they're defending themselves. They're fighting for their lives just to exist. And so I was getting pinstripes on my brand new paint. And I'm not a paint guy, I don't need the car to look nice, but it just felt wrong just letting these scratches happen on raw paint, so. Oops. <laughs> so I, I threw this wrap on here. Um, not the red, but it's got a matte black. Under there somewhere, the paint is, or the, uh, the rain is helping reveal it, but it, the whole thing has a uh, matte black paint on there. It's not perfect, but again, that's kind of the point, is that an off-road vehicle, you're supposed to use it, you're supposed to beat it up and it's supposed to take some hits. So the matte black kind of hides the dirt, hides the scratches. I think it makes the scratches look more normal. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was a success. I mean, there's obviously some issues with it, but at the same time, like I put some, some 
scratches and dings and pinstripes on top of that. So that it all blends in now. I think it works well. Um, and then, yeah, and as you can see up front uh, later on, I did throw a jumbo camo on here. Also not perfect, even though it's a really simple thing to wrap, but doing the prints are a little harder. And then I gave this thing some love to help it blend in in like a little bit of a Mad Max way. So yeah, that kind of gave it the look, gave it the protection I was looking for. And then, uh, which brings us right here to the front. Um, the main issue with Tesla is once you've got the traction and you can actually work with them on the trails and uh, you've got some uh, protection on the, the brake over there with the rock sliders is uh, your, your approach angle. So a lot of the trails you'll come down into a, a river crossing or a gully and you need to nose down into that sharp gully and then come back up. So I basically just started cutting and uh, on all Teslas, they've got a, a radiator grill here uh, to bring air in for the heat exchanger. It's not technically a radiator, it's a heat exchanger, but that guy lives right here and he sits horizontal. So um, it's not a simple system. There's a set of louvers in the front. There's a incoming or exterior air temperature sensor. There's some crash sensors. Um, so basically I cut that radiator portion off of the, uh, the front bumper cover and uh, just started sitting back in my garage and looking at it. I was like, how are we gonna make this work? Um, the obvious challenge from there was where to put the radiator or what to do with that. So I'm gonna pop the trunk here. Frunk, pop the frunk. Pop the frunk. And uh, you can see all the junk in my frunk. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> The radiator found new life, living at a 45 degree angle here. <laughs> um, so I built an upper strut member here, almost like a strut bar there, which some racing folks put in for extra support and less flex in your frame. But I put it in to hold the upper radiator mount. So I took the same rubber cushions that it came with mm -hmm. and uh, put those back on, moved the cables around. I had plenty of clearance in, in both the uh, liquid cables and the uh, electrical connectors. and mounted that top piece there and for the longest time the bottom of it was secured with a couple of oversized jumbo zip ties um, so it sat there and lived that way for a while um, and that allowed me to come back to the front and basically figure out where my new bumper would be and what it would look like so i started inside at the frame and these new members were what i built off of so i said well the frame rail is the most solid thing i need to bolt into that so i built or bought some steel that fit right in there. It's four and a half inch square tubing and that's quarter inch for those members on both sides. Um, I stripped out some of the nuts. So you can see there's a bolt missing there. Um, but uh, yeah, I started with that and that defines the front line of the bumper. So from there, I could tell where the, the bumper, I guess the main bumper piece would live. And I bought a piece of tubing and welded that on there and uh, put a piece of 3 16 steel sheet here is my my uh, skid panel there and so that again really set the tone for the, the rest of the build i cut the uh the bumper cover to match that line as best i could and uh, we went on some adventures last year in that kind of beta build format mm -hmm. um yeah i love the idea of like life as beta um meaning it's not it's not finished like your life is uh, a work in progress you're always mostly done but you shouldn't ever strive to be done. There's no, there's no objective. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, finished state for us or for, for me, for the car. Like I just want to keep building on it, keep working on it and uh, keep tweaking it. So that's where I ended up with the, uh, the bumper last year and it was super functional, but I wanted more. Uh, so the next objective was to add recovery points and a winch. And you can see from what's here that uh, those are now here. So those are like some 18,000 pound Badlands shackles um, and a winch in the middle. So I, I bought the winch to really start placing it. And based on uh, the form factor of this, I knew I could fit it with my radiator positioning, um, which is a matter of how to make it work. So I welded some additional pieces on to my, my bumper structure here and I actually took out the lower crash cans and built the rest of it there. So if you can see, there's another lower member there. And basically the, the two parts of the frame that the crash structure mounts to now hold the winch. I built that in, um, started with that as my, the next part of my structure, cut the hole for the fair lead and um, didn't have it fully bolted in uh, before I started building the rest of it. So back down under here, I just started piecing away at where I wanted the, uh, the bumper to, to 
to live, I guess, and how I wanted it to shape up the rest of the car and came up with this kind of four panel design where it's one panel, two panel, three panel, four panel, and uh, just started cutting up steel and, and welding it in, tacking it in until it had the look that I was going for. And uh, I think it came out pretty solid. So yeah, I just built that up. And um, the next piece was the winch wiring. So uh, the winch pulls a ton of power. This thing at its peak will pull 446 amps. Uh, it's a 12,000 pound Badland uh, winch. And so how many cyber trucks could you tow? I'm not totally sure. I mean, technically they're 7,000, well, 6,700 pounds. Um, so I could definitely pull one of those out, but it depends on how stuck they are. Um, but yeah, the main thing is just to have the ability to recover myself. And uh, so I figured I wouldn't actually be using all of that. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. Soft shackle. Nice. That's gonna go like through here, right? Yeah. Yeah. This has been building. <laughs> I mean, we're brand new on this winchy baby. Mr. Beta. This way. Oh man, the tree pulls your whole front end off. My front end? <laughs> that would be interesting. Whatever's left. <laughs> Simplest things, right? It's like, ah. Uh... Yeah. Go yeah. Engage. Yep. Turn it. A, a, a turn to the a free pull. Engage. engage. Okay, gotcha. Yep. It's engaged now. Yeah. Cool. Vamos. Sorry, I got in shot. That you get it. Uh... Hell yeah, Mr. Kyle. First time winching. Perfect. The bumper uh, stayed on. Yeah, it's not attached to the bumper, man. I mean, <laughs> the bumper stayed on. It's the, the, the frame, the frame of the car stayed on. Yeah, that's a better, that's a better statement. Yeah. Um, so what I did is I actually installed two lithium batteries. They're Renogy 100 amp hour lithium batteries. And they're in my trunk. And those are charged directly from the penthouse. All this is hidden, so we can't really look at it. But uh, those batteries tap directly into the penthouse of the, uh, the Tesla, so which is under the back seats. The penthouse feeds a Renogy 50 amp DC to DC charger. And that ensures that I'm not pulling more than the, the battery can put out. The penthouse is where the Tesla power conversion system lives. And so that feeds the, the batteries. And then the 50 amps I get from the car and the 200 amp amps that the battery can put out allows me to push this with 250 amps, which I think is more than enough for, for the vast majority of scenarios. I mean, if I'm pulling more than that, I'm gonna have other problems, but it, yeah. is, it is fused and protected at those ratings. So I'm not gonna exceed uh, the capacity of the wiring or the, my electrical system to put that out. So awesome. I basically put in a full auxiliary 12 volt system in the back and the front um, to power this guy. And uh, that let me put in lights. I've got a light bar, some fog lights and some uh, ditch lights up top, which the idea is not to have to use, but if you need them, they're there. Um, so yeah, that's been the progression of the build and I'm really happy with how it's coming around. Um, I've got a full camper set up, but we'll cover that in another video. Uh, it's, it's kind of a prototype build, so we'll, uh, we'll keep that off their books for now. Um, but that's the idea is to be able to go out on trails and explore this beautiful country and this beautiful world that we live in uh, with zero emissions um off-road if we need to go camp live in the car um and just make it fit the uh the adventures that i want to want to take on so yeah it's been awesome so far we had a great time in moab this week with with uh sandro uh rafael nancy uh and brandon i mean it's been a fantastic week here in moab so yeah yeah thanks for joining us and um if people want to find you where can they find you i'm on x that's really the main place i post and i posted some pictures from this week uh, the tag is uh, Mr. Kyle Field, so at Mr. Kyle Field on X. Mr. Better for me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, YouTube su suggests that you watch this video right here. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, dude.